This is a map of pollinator plant interactions in Mississippi. And as you can see, while there are some bare areas, there's still quite a few areas that are solid with observations. Now, if we look at, this is almost 14,000 observations of 567 species. If we take off the Mississippi filter, we can see that the areas around Mississippi are bare. And that's not because they don't have observations of pollinators there. We can change this. This is the project for pollinator associations. I can change it to pollinator taxa, which is a project I made for insects that are commonly seen as pollinating plants. Um, and we can see that all around Mississippi, there are plenty of potential observations to be added to this project. So today I'm going to be going to Alabama and trying to add observations to the Pollinator Associations project. The other thing that I'm going to do, um, I'm going to show you real quick the address bar because you can get more refined filters. For instance, I can add a not in pollinator, a not, a not in project pollinator associations, and this will filter out the ones that are already in the project I want to add it to. So when I go to identify, I have, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to look through things that I've already done before. I can also go over here and make sure to click research grade and needs ID so that I can get all the pollinator observations. And because this winter right now, most of the, the pollinators that you see are not gonna be actually pollinating anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the month over into September. And now we can go ahead and get started. We can click on this right here. We see this butterfly that's visiting this flower. Now what flower is this? This is a pretty distinctive one. You either know it or you don't. It's hairy cluster vine. So I'm going to go over here, type in hairy cluster vine, and the scientific name is going to come up. This is actually a type of morning glory. And this is a particular observation where you really have to have seen and observed this plant before to, to know that it has these flowers that look like this before they open. And it, the flowers are surrounded by these kind of hairy leaves that are in a cluster, and the fruit will develop underneath the leaves after it's been pollinated. This is an exotic weedy morning glory. Now let's see, is this visiting anything? It sure is. That looks like Heliotropium, but I am not sure which species. So I'm going to go over here and add Heliotropium as the name. Or maybe it's maybe it's not heliotropium. Maybe it's um, Eupoca. That makes more sense. Like it's probably Eupoca procumbens, if I had to guess. But since I, I'm not the most familiar with the flora of Alabama, after I do that, I'm gonna open a new a new tab, and I'm just gonna make sure that this actually occurs in Alabama. It does not really, except for this little spot. So let's see. It's this from this little spot, it is not. So I am wrong about this. I am going to go ahead and do that and delete. And since I really am not confident in what this is, I'm gonna leave it blank. Someone else will come, come along and fill that in. Let's keep going. Okay, here's one that I know. This is a long-tailed skipper visiting Brazilian verbena. And it's a verbena, it's got these small purple flowers, blooms in summer. And it's Brazilian verbena because the um, the flowers have this vertical component to them, whereas other verbenas, they're more kind of horizontal. So rather than coming spiraling up, they kind of spread out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add Brazilian verbena. And um, as you can guess by the by the common name this and the scientific name. This is not native. It's actually a kind of invasive plant, mostly invades um, old fields and stuff. Okay, here's some more um, Brazilian verbena. You can see as, as it continues to flower, the, 
the flowering spikes get longer and longer, and that is unique to verbena brusiliensis among the purple, the, the verbenas that have small purple flowers. There are some that have larger pale blue flowers that have um, flowering stalks like this, and then there are some that have very small white flowers, and those are further native. Brusiliensis. And we're getting a lot of larvae, caterpillars. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add without annotation, life stage, larva. And this will hopefully cut back on the number of those that we're seeing. So here's a Gulf fritillary visiting Lantana. This is Lantana strigochimera, which is an invasive Lantana of garden hybrid origin. It's still very commonly sold. You can recognize it because it has kind of this pinkish tint to some of the flowers. And because when it's fruiting, you can't really see the fruiting, but it doesn't have bracts that are persistent in the fruits. There are a few, few of the, um, the remains of the fruit. Now we have some love bugs on the Canyon Scandens. This is a great pollinator vine. It is actually in the sunflower family, and it's related to bone sets and, and other, other sunflower relatives. And you can identify it because it really is the only vine that has these clusters of white flowers that don't have obvious petals. That looks like a Tina. Snake roots. Don't know which species. Probably Altissima, that's probably the species it is. But I'm not sure. And keep looking. Look at the bottom of the page. And we'll just go to another random page. Okay, now we have a lot of ones that are on the same plant. Biden's Pelosa. Or not Biden's Pelosa, Biden's Alba, which is sometimes incorrectly called Biden's Pelosa. And I'm not going to bore y'all with identifying the same plant over and over again. So I'll move on to the next page, but I'll come back and identify all these. Biden's um, Alba is an exotic plant that basically only occurs along um, coastal areas, although it can occur further in north, just as a, a little weed. And here's something that's very interesting. We have this um, zealous assassin bug, milkweed assassin bug. And sometimes these will actually drink nectar, especially from plants in the aster family, like this Biden's alba. You can see that its legs are covered in pollen. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to the pollinator associations. This is not something that's very commonly observed. So that's, that's pretty special. And I'm going to say proboscis was not inserted. And pollen was, in, was on the insect, yes. Pollen was attached to, these are mostly bee terms. Are there any, anything for legs? And so I'm just gonna add to project like that. And then can keep going. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, maybe Xenius? Yes, this, that's Xenia elegans. I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong about that. So I'm gonna actually ask Observer, do you remember what plant was missing? And I had that copied and pasted and ready to go because I asked that question a lot. Okay, Let's move on to the next page. Well, we have mountain mint, sunflower. No, this is not mountain mint. This is um, frostweed. Herbicide virginica. And if you ever wonder what plants or what insects visit this plant, you can actually always click that and say observations with this field and value. And it will show you a map. That's 86 observations of 45 species. You can see pictures. You can see what those species are. Gulf fritillaries, monarchs, skippers, bumblebees. So it looks like it mostly is attracting butterflies and skippers with some bees as well. And the field that we're looking at, associated species with names look up, 
doesn't just cover pollinators, it also covers other things. And I'm interested to see why this milkweed bug is on frost wheat. This is really strange. I've never seen this before. Why would a bug that only eats milkweed seeds be on frost wheat? I'm gonna see, and these are all from the same person who observed them. I'm going to, are there any discussion of this in the comments? There isn't. Well, I'm gonna look into this. Well, thank you all for following along with me. I hope that you enjoyed this, learned some things, and I hope that you will follow the link in the description and start trying to add observations to this project. Thank you.